Good morning, everybody, and welcome to CEO Chat. My name is Al Cini. I'm Joe Osmond. <laughs> Where are you again? <laughs> no, I don't know. We do this every week. Yes, we do. Uh, and, uh, well, I, I know we missed you on Morning Coffee last week. You were here for, right. I'm glad you were able to make it for the interview. Right. Uh, we have a great, terrific guest with an exciting subject, an important subject to talk about. His name is David Desenza, Desenza Business Continuity. Welcome. Joe. Al. David, thanks for having me. Sure. Okay, now you, uh, as as you would expect, based on what you do for a living, you did some homework before you. Came I did on the some homework today. before I came. Why don't we start with that top ten? Sure. Uh, this is from Alliance Insurance. You know, they're a, a large global financial services insurance uh, company, uh -huh. and they did a survey of the uh, ten most important risks um, for 2019. Uh, their source on this survey were some 2,400. Uh, CEO, CFO, risk professionals uh, in large companies uh, from 86 countries. Mm -hmm. uh, so at the risk of sounding like uh, David Letterman, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> here, number the, 10. here are the top 10. Uh, number 10 is a shortage of skilled workers. Well, we, we know that here in the United States. So okay. we're seeing that it's very definitely a seller's market when mm -hmm. it comes to uh, skilled employees. Okay. Uh, number nine, loss of reputation. Or brand value okay for a, uh, a company uh, number eight is climate change losses that are due to some kind of uh, weather events mm -hmm. okay oh, like hurricanes uh, tornadoes mm -hmm. uh, tsunamis things like that okay, I'm keeping a little um, mental count the nine and okay. eight are definitely in your wheelhouse yeah. but keep mm -hmm. going number seven new technologies uh, that are disruptive uh, uh -huh. uh, artificial intelligence uh, autonomous machines mm -hmm. Uh, number six, fire or explosions. Um, you know, that accounted for about 24% of insurance losses last year. Really? Mm. Okay. In, um, uh, in commercial insurance. Number five is market volatility. Mm -hmm. And we've certainly seen that uh, recently in, sure. the, uh, in the stock market. But that also includes intensified competition mm -hmm. between okay. companies. Uh -huh. uh, number four, changes in regulations and legislation so things like tariffs mm -hmm. you know we're now in a trade war with china mm -hmm. uh there's brexit looming and nobody's right. really sure what impact that's right. going yeah. to have globally uh, -huh. uh number three are natural uh catastrophes uh you know again things like hurricanes earthquakes fires floods uh look at what happened in california with those uh, catastrophic fires. Mm -hmm. um, that accounted for some $150 billion in losses in 2018. Here's the interesting part uh, of it. Only $70 billion of that was covered by insurance. Mm. So less than half, less was, than half was recoverable, was, through, was insurance recoverable through insurance. Okay. Number two, as you can imagine, um, are cyber incidents, mm -hmm. cyber crimes, hacking. Mm -hmm but also uh, IT failures uh, mm. or uh, outages, either that were accidental or intentional mm -hmm. uh, as well. The, uh, the estimated loss due to uh, cyber incidences in 2018 was some $600 billion. Now mm. by 2021, that'll probably top a trillion. Okay, now, you, you have a way of getting people to understand yeah, what a trillion dollars is. Yeah, yeah, is. we throw around these terms, billion, yeah. you know, right. billion here, a billion there, pretty it's soon gazillion. you're talking real money. Uh, it's just a lot of money, yeah. right. Uh -huh. If you were to spend uh, a trillion dollars at the rate of one dollar a second, uh -huh. it would take you 32,000 years to spend that money. Mm. That's how big a trillion wow. is. Mm. And that's the size of the loss that, that we're, wow. we're facing with, with cyber. Mm. Right. Okay. Uh, and number one, which really takes the other nine into account, is just business interruption. Mm -hmm. Some kind of disruption of their normal operations. Now that can be a break in supply chain, uh, that can be due to things like, uh, take the civil riots the, that uh, have been occurring in France mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. gas prices right. mm -hmm. and gas tax. Um, so those are, are the things that are weighing heavily most on the minds of these business leaders of large companies. Okay. I so, don't deal with large companies. As you were as you were ticking those off, I'm thinking to myself, <clears throat> nine eight six three two one, more than half. Yeah. Uh, and maybe in, in many respects, almost all of that list are things that you help companies with. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and um, and it's not just big companies. 
although many of them have no plan for a lot of these contingencies, no matter if some of the biggest companies, like Experian, I'm thinking, have mm -hmm. been caught mm -hmm. on the short end of, yes. of not having a good plan yeah. for how to deal with this. Yeah. But a lot of solopreneurs have these problems. How do you help people anticipate and deal with these things? Well, the question that I help people answer is, what would you do if? Mm -hmm. If you couldn't run your business as you normally do, how would you get back to business as usual as quickly as possible? Okay. And more often than not, the answer is either a blank stare or, I you know, really thought about homina, that. homina, 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 homina. Right, right. Um, they haven't thought about it. Uh -huh. uh, you know, we as a species mm -hmm. are afflicted with something that I call short termitis. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, we only <clears throat> look so far ahead of us. We only think so far ahead of us. Mm -hmm. And in business, this has become uh, really evident because companies will think maybe a quarter or two ahead. They aren't thinking long term. And they're they just not mm -hmm. thinking about that. No, they're, okay. they're not thinking about it at all. Let me, let me, let me, let me try <clears throat> to express this in small terms because mm -hmm. there are uh, thousands of people out there potentially who are solopreneurs. Uh, who run their whole business off their laptop, for example, right? Mm -hmm. Not terribly mindful of whether they just saved a file on their C drive or mm -hmm. on something that's backed up to a cloud service. Maybe not mindful of the fact that their cloud service is even running. Maybe they've changed PCs and haven't reinstalled it. I mean, there are a lot of ways, there are a lot of ways that basic fundamental decision could go wrong. Yes. Just because people aren't thinking about that kind of stuff. Right. Or they can go to a customer site with just one laptop mm -hmm. If that laptop doesn't boot up at the customer site, that could be a very bad day for them. Maybe they need to pack two. Maybe they need to. Uh, if they haven't thought about how they're going to retrieve that data, if they're not carrying it on, on a, uh, a memory stick mm -hmm. or uh, some other uh, portable media, um, if they haven't sent the file ahead of them right. uh, through email to uh, a recipient in the company, um, they could be well, yeah, in, so, so not they paying could attention be in to trouble. these things uh, of the 95 percent of small businesses startups that never make it a big percentage of them may not make it because they haven't taken into account what to do if it happens to rain on me for four straight days you were talking about that uh, hurricane oh yeah hurricane harvey yeah. um yeah uh, harvey was an interesting situation you know the gulf coast has experienced hurricanes for long before there were, there were humans living mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. I mean, hurricanes are natural events. Uh, it's the way that heat gets distributed throughout the, uh, across the planet. Mm -hmm. uh, what nobody had ever experienced before or thought of was a hurricane that would come and stall mm -hmm. and right. then meander. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened with Harvey. For four days, that hurricane just kind of sat off the coast and then it downgraded to a tropical storm, but it was still dropping tons of water. There was one place in, um, uh, in Texas which got five feet of rain. Five feet wow. of rain. Five feet of rain over <laughs> those four days. That's, that's like 20 years of rain in one, yeah. in one week. There were places in the Houston area that flooded and uh -huh. had never, never, flooded before. never seen a flood before. And this hurt a lot of businesses. I, I have an older brother who's a, uh, a commercial claims adjuster mm -hmm. for, uh, for insurance. And he was down there for a long time. And he said some of the, the stories are just heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. There were these, these businesses that were flooded out. They had no flood insurance mm -hmm. right. because the area was never at risk for flooding right. until something like this happened. Now, People will say, oh, okay, but that was Hurricane Harvey. Mm -hmm. I and mean, what's the likelihood of that happening again? Well, that's what Hurricane Florence did on the East Coast right. last year. Mm -hmm. it, stayed, it, it stayed around for a couple of days and poured tons of water on a small area. You know, uh, there's, uh, you've heard of the, uh, the law of unintended consequences? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. Okay. I've, I've uh, gotten uh, hooked on that law once or twice. Okay. Uh, so there's a large pig farming industry mm -hmm. in North Carolina. Uh -huh. 
And pig farming is a really dirty, smelly, yucky business. I can imagine. imagine. You know, and uh, th they pulled the waste of... It's an um, input-output problem uh, with yes, pigs. I know. Yeah, it is. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I know. There's a <laughs> lot of output. <laughs> and it gets collected in ponds. Right. Uh -huh. Well, a lot of those ponds overflowed. And that stuff got into... Uh, drinking water. Into, into, the, uh, in, into the, the water yeah, well, streams. Okay. And into, right. So now, not only do you have this problem of, of uh, pollution right. from, from agriculture, you've also got a potential source here for um, sickness. And, mm -hmm. and oh, yeah, no, this is exactly. serious. As well. you, it's funny, as you were reading your, we're going to have to take a break in a minute. Right. When you were reading mm -hmm. your top 10 list, one of them is cost of uh, reputation loss. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I'm, I, I yeah. was thinking to myself, even though I didn't originally put that on your list, you get a situation where you're inadvertently polluting the drinking water in the town that, that is host to your business. Right. You have a reputation yes. problem. Yeah. That's something else. I mean, these have a way of uh, they have a way of blossoming into. Yes. Okay. So what usually happens is, as a rebound to an event like that, is that there's more legislation and regulation, right. and which which is which is also a threat to your business. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. We need to take a break. I want to come back and explore how you help people solve that. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. a, a terrific guest, Dave Desenza, Desenza Business Continuity Services. This is a guy you want to talk to to help you answer that question, what if? I mean, what if it rains here for a week? What if we get, what if the power goes out? Some questions that you'd rather not talk about are questions that if you wait long enough, they're going to happen. When they happen, if you're not ready, you've got a problem. We'll be back. More Dave Desenza after these messages on CEO Chat. Don't go away. Great. It's terrific. I work 13 hours a day, six days a week. So when I'm off the clock, I gotta get stuff done. So when I need a snack, I need something healthy, tasty, and easy to eat. Like wonderful pistachios without the shells. They're protein powered, delicious, and great on the go. And that's perfect for me. Thanks, Liz. A woman without a lot of time. Whether you're a gourmet cook or just want to eat like one, visit Rostelli Market Fresh, your home for the freshest locally sourced ingredients to please everyone who loves great food. Our organic meats, quality seafood, and free-range poultry are cut fresh to order. Chefs create culinary-inspired prep foods made fresh every day, which pair nicely with our vast selection of fine wines and spirits. Choose from handmade pastas, artisan cheeses, organic produce, and grocery items, all from the finest purveyors. Rostelli Market Fresh, from our family to yours. RVN TV is a platform for people of any industry to share their story. Over 285,000 viewers are tuning in to RVN TV shows monthly. We guarantee a great experience that you'll be sharing with everyone you know while increasing your personal and company's brand awareness. But what is your brand? According to Forbes, it's a combination of your logo, your product, your design and feel, and your personality. Did you know that aside from being a guest, we offer even more opportunity to boost your brand? Adding your company logo and website on screen during your interview will allow viewers to recognize your brand instantly. Incorporating images and video clips is another great way to showcase your product during your live segment. Let viewers see how good you really are. And most importantly, there's you and your interview. For less than the cost of a newspaper, direct mail, or a magazine ad, you can leave our studio and within 48 hours have a permanent digital copy of your live segment to link to your social media, embed into your company website, or use in email marketing. Investing in your brand is so very important, and we can't wait to have you as a guest. Welcome back to CEO Chat. My name is Al Cini. I'm still Joe Osman. And you better kiss me. Yeah. <laughs> wow. One thing I know I can count on. We have business continuity in place here right. on CEO Absolutely. Chat. As long as you're there, I know we can, we can do go. what we have to do. Right. Uh, and our guest is Dave Desenza, mm -hmm. Desenza Business Continuity Services. Business continuity is not what you do for a living. What you do for a living is or make things or you uh, provide services mm -hmm. for your clients. That's what you do for a living. Dave DeSense's expertise is helping you make sure you can continue to deliver those products and services mm -hmm. 
even if the unimaginable happens. And you know, we were talking about on a small scale, it could be you're, getting, you're having 30 people over for dinner on a right. Sunday, mm -hmm. you're depending on a flow of natural gas, you're depending on the electricity running. A lot of, now, if that goes wrong, you order a pizza. There's a backup plan for that. Mm -hmm. That's something you could work out. But if you're a business and you're depending on income related, if you're a restaurant mm -hmm. and those people are paying to sit in your restaurant, right. Yeah, paying to come here uh, to come and eat with you. That's a whole different story. That's where you need Dave Desenza. Right. Mm -hmm. So the question is, what do you absolutely need to have in order to run your business? What are the, uh, the critical uh, items that mm -hmm. you need to have in order to deliver the product or service that you offer your customers? And if there's mm -hmm. something that, that disrupts that, how are you going to get back to business as usual as quickly as possible? As quickly mm -hmm. as possible. And let's face it, there are some events that mm -hmm. are going to devastate mm -hmm. uh, a company. Let's say a fire, mm -hmm. right, for example. Now they're, they're without their place of business. <clears throat> okay, uh, if you're an insurance firm, do you really need a place of business to operate? Probably not. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's good to have a place for people to come to, but at least for a period of time, you can have people working remotely, or you can you can use uh, like American Executive Centers right. mm -hmm. for uh, uh, for key people. Um, but if you're a manufacturer, mm -hmm. you kind of need right. that place. You really you? do need that. So mm -hmm. if you can't make your product, how are you going to deliver on orders? So what strategies can you put in place? Well, are there other people who have similar machines? that can be retooled quickly, uh, that fine. could manufacture your product for you. That's actually an, an angle I hadn't considered, but you right. can form a consortium with, even with a competitor, potentially, where in the event sure. of a disaster, you can cover for each other by continuing to make mm -hmm. what sure. the other makes. As long as you have a, a legal agreement between you mm -hmm. that says, I'll cover you and you'll cover me, and we actually experiment to see that it it will actually work yeah. to make certain because... You don't want to wait until then you to don't find out wait. that you, they actually can't make your right, product. Right, right. You know, uh, I, I know you come out of uh, an IT background. I do, and, and, yeah. And you've told uh, me stories about people who thought that their data was being backed they up. They thought that this is my favorite of mine is they yeah. bought this big expensive system to back yeah. stuff up on. Yeah. And then one day they needed to restore. You couldn't find it. <laughs> it happened it wasn't. like five months later and they found out none of the data was there. Mm -hmm. So that's something else that I do for clients and that's to run exercise exercises for mm -hmm. them. Realistic exercises. You know, we, we were kidding around Not zombie beforehand. apocalypse. Not zombie apocalypse. Yeah, right. Because Real there are no zombies. Well, you know, some of us have worked with people we thought were zombies, but, <laughs> you know, th there are no real zombies, and, and creating a zombie apocalypse type of exercise. It trivializes the whole process. Exactly. Reduces it to uh, fun and games. It's you know. not a joke. It's, it's not a joke. Stuff. Let me tell you a, a quick true story. Um, uh, I was working for American Express, mm -hmm. uh, responsible for the business continuity plan for the risk management organization, mm -hmm. uh, headquartered uh, at the World Financial Center there in New York City, right along <laughs> know it well. the mm -hmm. banks of the, uh, the mighty Hudson River. Uh, a couple of hundred yards from the World Trade Center. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, that's a whole other story. Yeah. Um, and uh, we... Uh, because American Express is a financial services firm uh, required by regulation to have a business continuity plan every mm -hmm. department, and we were required to exercise those uh, plans every year. Mm -hmm. So I created an exercise in which we lost the use of the World Financial Center mm -hmm. due to flooding mm -hmm. caused by a hurricane. Mm -hmm. Right. Hurricane Sandy, for and, example. And, and what would we do? Uh -huh. um, we worked through our plan. Uh, we found some gaps in our plan, mm -hmm. which is why you do these things. Sure. And closed those gaps. And uh, at the end of the exercise, I had a vice president say to me, you know, you, you went over the top with this. <laughs> and This could never happen. <laughs> this could, you know, <laughs> you know, what's the likelihood of this ever happening? Mm -hmm. And I, I said, I, you know, I'm not going to argue with him. Um, I said, but something like this potentially could happen. You know, for whatever reason, we mm -hmm. could lose the use of this business. Mm -hmm. How would we respond to that? Are we prepared to? Mm -hmm. And of course, 18 months later, Sandy did happen. Right. Right. We lost the, uh, in my exercise, we lost the building for a month. In reality, we lost it for four months. 
really, yeah, realistically, yeah, you just yeah. uh, there were some people that were down and out for years right. yeah. after that event. Now, we um, the business continuity plans are reactionary by sure. by their nature, right. uh -huh. but you can be proactive in implementing them, and mm -hmm. and that's what we did. We implemented it the Friday before Sandy hit. Sandy hit on a Monday. Knowing it was coming. We knew it was coming. Uh -huh. We knew the likelihood was that we probably wouldn't be able to get in here at least for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who knows how long, really. We sent people home with their laptops, told them to work from home if they were able to. We distributed work out to other sites around the globe. Mm -hmm. We continued to function as a business unit, didn't miss a beat. Right. But again, we were without the building for four months. Well, not, not expected at all. I mean, not you expected, expected maybe we'll be out for a week or maybe two not weeks. Not expected at all. But, but four months. But we had practiced that. Mm -hmm. Now, a flaw that I see in most companies is that they might have a plan. Mm -hmm. But there it is. Yeah. And it sat on somebody's desk for yeah. a year or I two. Know. Nobody's touched it. Uh -huh. It's probably out of date. There are people who have probably left the company, uh, new people who right. have come in. They're not familiar with never the plan. Never a priority for anybody. And they've never exercised it. They don't know if, it, if it'll work. Having a plan is, is a great thing, but you've got, you've got if to know you've never exercised you... it, you don't know if it's going to work. Uh. And you want to find out if, if you're going to succeed or if you're going to fall flat on your face well, with this. Now, this is exactly where working with somebody like you comes in. Because, um, and we talked about this even before the program, a lot of people are reluctant to discuss what we're discussing here because they're admitting a vulnerability that they don't necessarily want to go on record about. Mm -hmm. So, um, for example, in a publicly traded company, you might have a board meeting where somebody raises the possibility of a sustained weather event. Mm -hmm. that could destroy the headquarters building, right? Or at least make it inaccessible. Uh, you, bring that up in a, you bring that up in a meeting, somebody takes that in the corporate minutes, and then later you don't do anything about it. You're now actionable in like five million different oh, ways. Oh, sure, sure. If you're a publicly traded company and that becomes uh, public knowledge, you that have you, the potential that, that of a lawsuit. You discussed a threat you never addressed. Yeah, you, you've uh, got the potential of a lawsuit on uh, on behalf of the shareholders for loss of shareholder value because of your inaction. Well, that's a problem. And a yeah. bad way to deal with that is to tell people, we can't talk about that here because somebody's taking minutes, mm -hmm. which happens in a lot of cases where they actually ignore the threat that they really need to deal with because they're afraid to have anybody write down that they discussed it one day. Look, nobody likes to talk about the fact that bad things can happen. Right. I mean, when you leave in the morning, you kiss your wife goodbye, but you don't say, goodbye, dear, I may never see you again. That's right. true. You don't. But it's, but it's true. But it's true. But it is it's a, a possibility. It, it's a possibility. We're going back to the World Trade Center because that was a day when people kissed their wives and husbands goodbye right. that morning right. and, and never came home. And um, I know businesses that were in the World Trade Center who had a primary data center in World Trade Center 2, and the backup data center was in World Trade Center 1. Sounds like a lot. That was because of the explosion in 1993. Oh, they mm -hmm. figured that would cover it. No way both buildings could go yeah. down. And uh, those kinds of impossible things are actually what jam you up when they happen. It's a lack of imagination on the part of, of people or mm -hmm. thinking, you know, that, that's so wild and crazy. It couldn't possibly happen. Well, it couldn't possibly happen that a hurricane's going to ha hang around for four days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it did. But it it did. couldn't possibly happen that we would have these wildfires that, that would destroy several hundreds of thousands of acres and take... In California in, and you know, wipe out. Yeah, I know. But it did. But it did. Yeah, Doesn't it take a, a disaster like that, though, to wake people up? Because you're right. People think it never can happen. But now that it does happen, they become more aware. They right. become more aware. But again, people are afflicted with short-term itis. Okay. Mm. So I met a fellow who runs... Uh, well, at the time, he was running a, uh, a food service company up in the, uh, the Newark area. Mm -hmm. They had been affected by Hurricane uh, or Superstorm Sandy. Mm -hmm. uh, they had lost power, and because of where they were, they didn't get power back for two weeks. Well, th they manufactured the, these pre-assembled uh, food trays for nursing homes mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. uh, businesses like that. And so without refrigeration, they lost a lot of their uh, sure. stock, Stonic, yeah, sure. uh, you know, a, as a result. They couldn't get, uh, they had no backup generation. They right. hadn't thought about that. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, they had to sue their insurance company 
who denied their business interruption in, uh, claim. Really? Mm -hmm. Took them to court some 18 months later, they finally got. It, but 18 months, months later. later. 18 months later. So, and I said to the fellow, so um, do you want to talk about developing a business continuity plan? They said, oh, no, no, we don't need that. We've moved to another area, and, and we're <laughs> going to be It never happened again. It, and, so and even after like that, this, even right. after that. They're so. still, they still have their yeah. head in the sand, and yeah. they're pretending it can't happen because nobody no. likes to think about it. And now, the people watching our program might be uh, chief operating officers, mm -hmm. CEOs. Is it the operating officer or the executive officer who typically calls you from a company to get you involved? You know, usually it's the CFO. The financial who gets officer. Involved. Well, that's because their... risk usually rolls up through there. Okay. But, but also, you know, usually it, it's, it's the company president mm -hmm. uh, from mm -hmm. whom I, I hear. You know, somebody who's labored a long time to build this business mm -hmm. and wants to keep it running and realizes that, um, you know, Someday something's going to happen for which we're not prepared. And mm -hmm. that will and, be a bad thing. And day. having it, yeah, it'd be a very bad thing. Uh -huh. And if this is something that uh, they want a legacy uh, to pass on to their children, mm -hmm. then they want to be prepared to meet uh, any eventuality. Sure. Mm -hmm. So having a plan is one form of risk mitigation. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it doesn't stop things from happening, but it does <clears throat> help you get back on your feet quickly. Oh when they do happen. Okay, so mm -hmm. somebody out there who might be concerned that something could happen uh, could give you a call and the conversation starts with what are the most critical things in your business mm -hmm. that you absolutely can't live without? Let's see if we can't figure out a plan right. for that. Right. Is it expensive to hire you to do these things? You know, um, I know it's expensive to not think right. about it. It's expensive things. to not think about it. When, when you look at the, the cost of, of my time, mm -hmm. uh, in helping a company develop a plan, um, it's a fraction of what they would lose in of the business. recovery mm -hmm. uh, um, costs yeah. uh, that would be involved. Yeah, I, I think it's important for people to understand that the lack of the, the absence of a plan is unforgivable. The no. lack of a plan that you've tried out is embarrassing, mm -hmm. really at, at a minimum, and possibly uh, both of those could be catastrophic. Sure, you know, having a plan that you haven't updated and right. you haven't exercised. Uh, is as bad as not having any plan at all. Yeah. Do you ever come in and review people that have a plan? I have, yes. Um, and uh, I find that, you know, <laughs> very often it's, well, she's not here. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's gone. Wait, wait he's, he's over here. Wait, I know that's not his phone number. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, right. right. Uh -huh. You know, uh, communication is key. Just in, you have the in, phone in number for now, you know who to you know. call. I mean, yeah, event, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good you point. You know, if you want to, you need to have some kind of a uh, an emergency communication system mm -hmm. set mm -hmm. up to reach people, even if it's just you're texting people. Right. Yeah. Well, if you've got the wrong phone numbers, mm -hmm. <laughs> what good is it going to be? What good is it going, and, going and to be? And that's do? going to be the day when you really absolutely can't afford to get anything wrong. That's so, right. Okay, we, we need to wrap up, but I, uh, for me anyway, it's obvious. If you have a, a business that you depend on, and most people, if they have a business, they kind of depend on it, then you need to cover just about every contingency that you can imagine. And a lot of that requires expertise from people like Dave DeSenza to help you work out those plans and develop those plans. So Dave, maybe you can talk into your camera mm -hmm. and tell everybody how to reach you so that you can help them put a plan like that together. Well, the simplest way to reach me is uh, Google my name. You'll find me. I'm, I come up number one. Uh, on a Google search, at least here in the uh, the greater Philadelphia area. Uh, I'm on the web, uh, Descends of Business Continuity Solutions, and um, call me, and uh, we'll talk. There's no charge for talking about, uh, about your business, and um, we'll talk about uh, what you consider to be the most critical aspects of the company, and um, what you believe you need to do in order to get back to business uh, as quickly as possible. Oh. So pull your head out of the sand, pick up the phone, and call Dave Desenza. <laughs> Dave, what a pleasure. A very well, eye-opening and very much. revealing. Good. Joe? Yeah, nice to meet you, man. Absolutely. Such mm -hmm. an important conversation. Right. Nobody ever talks about it. You need to talk about it or it's going to come right. back and bite you. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you all for joining us on uh, CEO Chat. My name is Al Sini. I'm Joe Asabendi. And we're going to come back in about 30 minutes with uh, another great CEO Chat. So right. we'll see you soon. Stick around. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Thanks.